everyone and welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be over division, but more specifically it's going to be over division while we interpret remainders. Now, this video is accompanied with student note pages that are very helpful as you follow along. You can find the link to the student notes in the description below, but you don't have to have the notes to view the video. You can watch the video and take notes on your own. Now let's get started. Now let's talk about division for a little bit. Division is a math operation where you take a number and break it into equal parts or groups. When we divide, we split a larger number into smaller groups that are equal. Here are some symbols that represent division. Now we're going to use the numbers 3, 4, and 12 to show these symbols. The first symbol is this one. You have a line with the dots on top and below. This is a symbol you see very often. In fact, you'll see this one probably more than all the others. And when you look at this symbol in a division problem, you would say 12 divided by 3 equals 4. Now it's important to remember the division vocabulary. The larger number is your dividend. You divide that by your divisor, and your answer in a division problem is always the quotient. Another symbol that you'll see is what kind of looks like a sideways L or maybe half of a square, that represents division divided by. And the way that you represent it with the numbers is 12 divided by 3 equals 4. Again, you have your dividend, divisor, and quotient. Another way to represent division is simply with a line. And your dividend goes on top, 12 divided by 3, and your answer is 4. Now, this particular line can also be represented sideways like this, and those are symbols you're going to see often when you represent the operation of division. Now, sometimes a number cannot be divided into equal groups. Let's take the example of 18 divided by 5. Now, I have five groups, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I'm going to divide 18 evenly into my groups. So when I do this, I say one for this group, one for this group, one for this group evenly as I divide them out. Now, as they're divided out, you can see there's three in each group, but that only takes us up to 15. So I have these three here that if I were to, to divide them into the circles, my circles would be uneven. These ones would have four dots and these two here would only have three, so they're not even. So in order for my division to stay even, I'm going to have a leftover amount. And the leftover amount is called the remainder, and it's represented with a lowercase r. So these three dots are my remainder, and my answer ends up being 18 divided by five is actually three with a remainder of three. This three represents the three that are in each group, and the remainder three represents the three that would have made the groups uneven. This three is my remainder, and my remainder is right here. When you're presented with a division problem, it's best if you think about the multiples. Now let's take this example, 31 divided by seven. Let's think about your divisor seven. Think about the multiples of seven. When we skip count by seven, do I ever say 31? Well, seven, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42 going on. Do I ever say 31? No, I don't. So I know that this division is going to give me a remainder. Now, here is a picture of 31 divided by seven. So I can see I have seven groups in the circles, and in each group I have four, and I have a leftover amount, which is my remainder. So when I'm dividing 31 divided by seven, the answer is four, that's what's in each group, with a leftover or remainder of three, and that is 31 divided by seven. If you are only dividing with numbers, you can simply divide to find the answer. 27 divided by eight. I know that answer is three remainder three. 
48 divided by 9. I know that answer is 5 remainder 3. And 14 divided by 3 is 4 remainder 2. When you are solving a story problem with a remainder, you will have to figure out what to do with it. And that's when interpreting remainders starts to become a skill you have to try and perfect. When you figure out how to interpret a remainder, that means you're figuring out what to do with the remainder. Now, when you interpret a remainder, it means that you are figuring out what to do with it. Do I keep the remainder? Do I add to it? Do I leave it alone? When you face a story problem, here are four things you may have to do with the remainder. You may have to leave it alone, leave the remainder. You may have to add one more, and that's actually to the quotient. You may have the remainder being your answer, and you may have to share the remainder. Now, there are many different variations of these four things that you can do with the remainder. There's all sorts of language out there that describes what to do with the remainder. These are just the four ways that I talk about it with my students to describe what you do when you're dividing and you have to interpret what to do with the remainder. Now, let's talk about the remainder, leave it. Here's a story problem where you have to leave the remainder alone. Josh's mom was putting his toys in three toy boxes. The toys that didn't fit in the toy boxes would be donated. Josh had 28 toys to divide out. How many toys went into each toy box? Show the division equation below. Okay, I know that I have 28 toys to be divided into three toy boxes. And now I know that 28 does not divide by 3 evenly, so that's telling me that I'm going to have a remainder. So let's set this problem up. Here are my 3s. Do I ever see 28 when I skip count by 3? No. Here are my toy boxes. Those are my groups. Now I'm going to divide the 28 toys into these toy boxes. And I'll say one for this group, one for this group, one for this group one for this group, one for this group, one for this group, until I'm done with all 28. Now, as you can see, my boxes are even. And all 28 are going to be divided out, but right now, each box has nine, nine, and nine. They're even. But I have one toy that would make my boxes uneven. And this is my leftover toy this is my remainder. So how many toys went into each toy box? Nine toys went into each toy box. How many toys were left over? How many toys did not fit? One toy. So I would say remainder one. Now what is my answer? Do I need the remainder in this problem? Do I need to do anything with it? No, I don't. So I'm going to leave it leave the remainder, I don't need it. Nine is my answer because the question said, how many toys went into each toy box? And nine toys went into each toy box, I left my remainder alone. And that is leave it when you're dividing. Okay, let's talk about dividing where we have to add one more. Sadie invited her 30 friends over for her birthday party. The tables at Sadie's party could seat four people each. How many tables could seat all, that's important, of Sadie's 30 friends? Show the division equation below. So I know I'm going to be dividing 30 of her friends. I know that four people could sit at each table. Now let's think about the fours. Here is your fours skip counting. Do you see the number 30? No, you don't. So you know there's going to be a remainder. The question is, what do I do with the remainder? So we're at Sadie's party, and I have a table for her friends, and I know that four friends can sit at that table. Four more friends would make eight. Four more friends at this table would make 12. 16 friends, 20 friends, 24 friends, 28 friends. Now let's stop right there. 
When I divide 30 divided by 4, my division answer is 7 with a remainder of 2. Now, there are two friends at the party right now that don't have anywhere to sit. But the question said, if all of her friends were seated, how many tables would they need? So here's what's going to happen with these two friends. We're not going to let them sit on the floor. I'm going to add one more table, and I'm going to say that this can be 29 and 30. There are all of her 30 friends, but at this table, there will only be two friends sitting while the other tables have four friends sitting. So let's look at our answer. My answer is seven remainder two. How many tables could seat all of her friends? Well, these two friends needed an extra table. So seven tables was not enough to seat all of her friends. So I'm going to add one more table, and now seven plus one is eight. So eight tables could seat all of Sadie's friends. And this is your example of add one more to the quotient. Okay, let's talk about division where the remainder is actually your answer. Mrs. Lopez had lunch money in her pocket to hand out to her children. She gave the same amount to each of her five kids. She had 24 $1 bills to pass out to her kids. If she divided the $24 evenly to all her children, how much money did she put back in her pocket? So let's talk about the division here. I know that Mrs. Lopez has $24, and she's going to divide that $24 to her five kids evenly. Now, I know my fives, and I know that I never say the number 24 when I skip count. So this answer is definitely going to have a remainder. But what do I do with that remainder? So let's look at her children and each child is going to get the same amount of money so she's dividing them evenly one for you one for you one for you one for you and each child gets an even amount of dollar bills now as she has divided them you can see here that there are four dollars for this child four for this child each child has four dollars now all of these dollars only add up to $20. Now, Mrs. Lopez still has some money left over. So when I divide this, 24 divided by 5 is actually 4 with a remainder of 4. That's my division answer. The question is, what does Mrs. Lopez do when she has money left over that she puts in her pocket? Well, I know that each child got four, and that leaves Mrs. Lopez with her $4, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So how much money does she put back in her pocket? She puts $4 back in her pocket. So in this case, this remainder, that $4, that is your answer. I don't need to know how much each child got, even though that is part of the problem. That's not what the question is asking me. If she divided the $24 evenly to all her children, how much money did she put back in her pocket? And the pocket is the remainder. The pocket is your answer. So she put $4 back in her pocket. And that is an example of how you may use the remainder as your answer. Okay, let's talk about the last option of what you can do with your remainder and that is share it. JC was baking cookies for her family. She baked 22 cookies for her family of four. The family ate all the cookies for dessert. How could each of them eat an equal amount? Well, let's go ahead and take a, take a look at our numbers. There's 22 cookies that will be divided among four family members. Well, I know my fours, and I know that when I skip count by four, I don't say the number 22. So I'm going to have a remainder. Now, let's go ahead and divide out the cookies evenly to her four family members. If you divide them evenly, one for you, one for you, one for you, one for you, you will end up seeing that each family member gets five cookies. But when I divide these out, I know that I only have 20 so far. 
20 cookies have been divided. So what happens to cookie 21 and 22? Well, what am I going to do with those two cookies? I can share them by cutting them in half and passing out the halves equally to the family members. So each family member gets half of a cookie and now I've shared my remainder and each person gets an even amount. So what is 22 divided by four? Well, the answer is five and that's how many whole cookies each person gets with a remainder of two. Now, the two, that is what we cut in half over here, and that two was actually shared among the four people. So, how could each of them eat an equal amount? Well, we shared them, and they each ate five and a half cookies because we shared the last two cookies. And that is an example of share it. Okay, now we're gonna do some division problems where you have to figure out what to do with the remainder. And your options of what to do with the remainder are right over here. So let's begin. The technology department at Sycamore Elementary distributed four computers to each classroom. The computers that were left over would be placed in the computer lab. 38 computers were distributed. How many computers were placed in the computer lab? Okay, so I know that there are 38 computers being passed out, and I know that four are going to go to each classroom. So let's put these computers in the classrooms. Four computers went to this classroom. Four more went to this classroom. That's eight computers. 12 computers were passed out. 16, 20, 24 computers. 28, 32, 36, hang on, I have computer 37 and 38. Now, these computers right here are only two, and it was supposed to be four per classroom. So I can tell from my division, 38 divided by four is actually nine with a remainder of two. So what about these two computers? The question said, how many computers were placed in the computer lab? That was the leftover computers. Well, there were two computers that were left over. That was actually computer 37 and 38. So how many computers were placed in the lab? Two were placed in the lab. So in this case, my remainder of two that is what I'm looking for to answer this question. So my remainder is the answer. Okay, let's try another one. Mrs. Lozano was passing out pencils to her students. She had 68 pencils to pass out to nine students. She wanted each student to receive the same number of pencils. How many pencils did each student get? Box up your answer and shade the box that tells what to do with the remainder. So I know that I have 68 pencils that I want to divide evenly to my nine students. Well, what is 68 divided by nine? Think about your nines. I know that it cannot divide evenly. So let's think about those nine students. Here they are. And each of them receives an equal amount of pencils. One for you, one for you, one for you, until I've passed out all 68. But when I pass out 68 pencils to nine students, I'm going to have some leftovers. I'm going to have five leftover pencils. 68 divided by nine is actually seven because each student receives seven pencils. That's where that number comes from. And there's pencils that are left over. There are actually five pencils that are left over. Here is my remainder of pencils, my leftovers. So the question said, how many pencils did each student get? Well, when I pass them out evenly, each student received seven pencils. 
Do I need anything with the remainder? Is the remainder part of the answer? No, not at all. I just need to know how many pencils each student got. So in this case, I will leave the remainder. It is part of the answer, but it's not the part that's gonna answer the question. So in this case, what do I do with the remainder? I leave it alone and I just focus on the quotient. Mrs. Valdez gave each of her four kids chocolate candies. After dinner, she divided the 14 candies evenly and her children ate all the candy. If each child was given an equal amount, how much candy did each child get? Box up your answer and shade the box that tells what to do with the remainder. Okay, so Mrs. Valdez has four children and she passed out chocolate candies to each of them. She passed out 14 to each of them. What is the division you see here? 14 candies divided equally to four kids. And so far, I see that 14 divided by four is three. So each child gets three whole pieces of candy, but this has a remainder. 14 divided by four is three with a remainder of two. Now, this remainder right here is over here. There's candy number 13 and 14. What are we going to do with these two candies so that we can divide them equally to all four kids? Well, the problem said that they ate all the candy. So let's cut these candies in half and let's share them each half to each child. So what happens when we share? That means each child got three and a half pieces of candy. So if each child was given an equal amount, how much candy did each child get? So yes, three with a remainder of two is my answer, but it does not answer the question. We had to take the remainder, we had to share the remainder, and we actually cut the remainder in half so that each child could have an extra half piece. So each child was able to get three and a half pieces of candy. Okay, let's practice one more problem. The train at Penelope's Pumpkin Patch drove its guests around the pumpkin patch all afternoon. Each car on the train could seat three people. If 29 people were in each group to ride the train, how many cars would the train need for all the guests to ride? Box up your answer and shade the box that tells what to do with the remainder. So I know that I have 29 people in each group that are wanting to ride the train. And in each car, three people can fit. So let's go ahead and set up our train. There are three people in one car, three more in another car, that is six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21 people, 24 people, 27 people. And what about the 28th person and 29th person? All of these cars are even with three people in each car. So if I divide 29 by three, my answer will be nine with a remainder of two. Now, this two right here, that two is here. It's these two people that don't have a car to ride in. So what needs to happen is we need to add one more car so that these two people can ride in the car. And this car will have two people in it while all the other cars have three. So in this case, my answer was nine remainder two, but the question said, how many cars would the train need for all the guests to ride? Well, 28 and 29 needed to ride as well. So instead of it being nine cars, we would have to 
add one more car so that these guests could ride with everybody else. So nine plus adding one more is 10. How many cars would the train need for all the guests? The train would need 10 cars. So the train needed to add one more car for the guests. I hope that you found this division video helpful. If you'd like to see more helpful videos in the future, be sure to like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you and have a great day.